the year 1963. The site, Miami's Orange Bowl, the Combatants, Alabama's Crimson Tide, Oklahoma Sooners, the legendary coaches, Paul Bear Bryant for Alabama, Charles Bud Wilkinson for Oklahoma. Among the thousands in attendance, President John F. Kennedy. Several national titles between the two in the past, but both had fallen just short in 1962. The first meeting between the two would be for pride and the making of another Crimson Classic. Hi, I'm Gary Harris, and welcome to Crimson Classics. Consensus National Champions in 1961, Coach Bryant and his players had high expectations for the 62 season, with another national championship as their goal. Let's watch and listen as the Bryant Museum provides us with a rare treat. Legendary Bama coach Paul Bryant reflects upon the start of the 1962 regular season. A great many people were interested in the new look of the Alabama football team when we opened with the University of Georgia in Birmingham. Joe Namath, sophomore quarterback, simply gave the boys something to go home to talk about, particularly the Georgia secondary. Here Joe throws his first touchdown pass for the University of Alabama when he hits Richard Williamson for a beautiful, long touchdown. Richard Williamson was senior in from Port Deposit and a real fine end too. Before we went down to New Orleans this year, uh, everyone was concerned about the New Orleans jinx, but uh, the boys took care of that real early in the football game. Here's Eddie Vesperelli breaking out behind Leroy Jordan, Jimmy Sharp, Richard Williamson, and running some 40 or 50 yards. That's Jimmy Wilson down there blocking for him here along with Rich Henry. We came back to Birmingham to play the University of Alabama University, and some people thought that we didn't play very well. Uh, I don't go along with that. I thought the team played quite well if Vanderbilt just played better than they'd been playing. Here's Eddie Vesperelli breaking out on another nice run. Richard Williamson down there blocking for him. Uh, back at the point of attack, Steve, Steve Allen and Jimmy Wilson and Al Lewis sprung him on that play. Uh, we gave the Vanderbilt a touchdown early and made it more difficult. And I thought, all right, Many people didn't go to Knoxville this year. As a matter of fact, I've seen many years I'd like to stay at home, too. It was on television, and a lot of our folks said they were tired. That's Billy Battle catching a pass from Joe Namath. Tired of going up there and uh, letting their friends kill him to death and blow them up and then run out and get them in our ears back on Saturday afternoon. It didn't happen this time, however. That's Tim Davis kicking a field goal the first time we had the ball. Go over to Starksville to play Mississippi State, and uh, I don't, if you haven't been there on homecoming, why well, you don't know just what goes on. Anyway, they are an enthusiastic group, and Cotton Clark makes a great run there, although it's just for four or five yards for a touchdown. George Myra, the Matador, comes to Tuscaloosa for a homecoming, and believe you me, he liked to give a lot of us heart attacks. A great play there, or we probably would have had, by Billy Piper, junior halfback from Poplar Bluff, Missouri, saved the touchdown by intercepting the pass. He shipped in the punt formation. George Mara did everything but take up tickets the first half. Here off a of punt formation, Joe Namath throws sideline cut to Richard Williamson to get us out of a bad hole. Mercy, if you're here now. We're in Atlanta. Joe Namath on a rollout pass off of Fred Formation, his Cotton Clark. Great game. This is one of the greatest games, one of the much hard hitting games in any game I've ever seen, I believe. Georgia Tech's a great football team, a talented football team. Real big, real big, strong, and fast. Going into the Tech game, the Tide, ranked number one in the country, had not lost in 26 games. But for some reason, Brian approached this game somewhat differently. You know, I think we uh, went into the game uh, feeling that they might have uh, had more talent than we did and uh, uh, that we 
couldn't beat them head up, you know, doing the things that we normally did. So we had to go to some unusual formations and, and things to try to try to uh, take advantage of them. And, uh, and 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 we had two near misses that would have been touchdowns early in the game from those formations, but it didn't work out uh, for us. When their team is trailing, great coaches use halftime to make adjustments, and Coach Bryant did just that making changes to give his team a chance to come back and win the football game. Cotton Clark goes into the score here behind Jimmy Sharp and Steve Allen, Billy Battle, Butch Wilson, Joe Namie. I can't see can find anybody that's going to call it. Jimmy Wilson pulled and made a block there. Leroy Jordan. So after a while, we get the touchdown. We'll try for two. And here's that play. They made a great defensive play. Every man over there made great defensive plays. If you watch, you see there. And even at that, it was close enough to give you a thrill, believe you me. Now, Jack fumbled the ball after his, he knew that uh, he hadn't made it or the official had signaled he hadn't made it. Well, he fumbled the ball purposely, hoping that maybe one of our players would recover it in there for the score. We had to come back and play our regular game and had our chance to win the ball game. We get down there and score late in the game after they had led the game for uh, the biggest part of the game, seven to nothing, and we score the touchdown and go for the two-point conversion. And just we didn't have many of us on offense. Uh, they got a block, you know, and uh, Jack Hurlbut was you know so close to scoring, and we said he scored anyway, but uh, we didn't get the call. The players knew they would no longer have a chance at the national title, so the Tide players took a lesson from the loss and made a vow. Well, I, I think you learn from every loss. Uh, you know, every game or, or uh, even in business, if you're uh, you know, working and you, and you lose a deal, you, I think you learn something from the experience of having been there and what you could have done better. The Tide quickly put the tech loss behind them and got back to business in the season finale, shutting out in-state rival Auburn. 38 to nothing. When we return on Crimson Classics, Coach Bryant chooses Alabama's bowl game. Coach Bryant was obviously a great X's and O's coach, but he also understood the business side of the game, and it was good business for Alabama to choose its bowl game. In my opinion, Coach Bryant had a lot to do with who went to what, what bowl, who played in what bowl. <laughs> uh, some people don't believe that, but I do. Um, and I, I'm sure that um, he had a lot to do with us going to the Orange Bowl, but of course we hadn't lost but one game. Coach Bryant would always call the seniors in. I was a junior at that time, but he'd call the seniors in. And we'd gone to the Sugar Bowl the year before and played Arkansas. And I think everybody was pretty unanimous in wanting to go to Miami and uh, kind of go down there and see what the beaches in the sun was like. While Bryant was making a name for himself at Alabama, Bud Wilkinson was already a legend in Oklahoma. Well, Coach Wilkinson was a great coach, and uh, he, Coach Bryant, always he'd always tell you that uh, he's a great coach. He gets the job done, and he does this and he does that. But he he liked Bud Wilkinson. But to play against Bud Wilkinson, the uh, the great name, uh, was. Uh, just added to the excitement of it. Uh, play in Oklahoma, the, one of the great names and uh, great traditions in college football. <clears throat> it was an unbelievable opportunity for Alabama, for Coach Bryant. Great challenge for us, uh, a team coached by Bud Wilkinson, who was one of the great coaches in the, in the business. And uh, uh, it, was, it was just a thrill for us to think that we were gonna have, have a chance to play against another uh, highly rated team. The primary purpose of any bowl trip, of course, is to win the football game. But it's nice for the players to have a little fun, too. In the 63 Orange Bowl, playing Oklahoma, uh, we went down there early. They had police escorts. Uh, every uh, game, they would go to different um, uh, 
entertainment, their team would go, our team would go. And, uh, but it was still uh, demanding and they still practiced hard, but he let us enjoy the, the atmosphere more. I'm going to tell you, they entertained us uh, unbelievably down there. It, there was something planned for us. Uh, it seemed like every night we'd go out somewhere and have an activity planned. With all the pageantry and activities the Bulls have for the teams, it's hard enough trying to keep them focused on the game. And to add to this, Bryant was distracted the night before kickoff by a loyal fan. Somehow or another, a copy, a copy of the Oklahoma game plan and a gentleman from Alabama brought it up and gave it to Coach Bryant. I'm not certain but I believe that fan was Julian Lackey from Birmingham uh, and this was most likely a plant and this happened in a lot of cases uh, it would it would force a coach and his staff to look at this in case it is the real deal and then to try to make adjustments to what possibly may be coming in the game. But yet do it quietly so the players doesn't, are not aware of what you're doing. Well, that's what they're saying that the chair drill, I think, how it came about. But, and, and then I heard that somebody had planted it, that it really wasn't a real Oklahoma playbook, that they wanted us to think they had all these plays and, and you know try to use all our time preparing for it. I didn't know much about it. Regardless of the validity of the playbook, Coach Bryant wasn't about to take any chances. We spent some extra time in big meeting rooms in the hotel like the night or the day before the game walking through what the coaches were saying was, were, this is a possibility. Oklahoma may come with this or they have done this in the past. We're just looking at this in case they come with it. But the coaches were scared to death that this could be true. I think Coach Bryant had talked to Leroy and, and uh, Leroy Jordan and some of them, and that's the reason we had that chair drill, though, to prepare for some of the things I think that they had seen in that playbook. I don't know if it's true or not true. We heard uh, that, but we, you know, there was nothing changed, uh, so, you know, we didn't, we didn't see any difference in anything if it, it uh, was. And, you know, some things like that you hear and you say, well, are they planting something for us or, or you know, you, you don't pay much attention to those kind of things. So uh, nothing changed in our game plan really that, uh, that we could tell as players. While the team was concentrating on winning the football game, they were also well aware of a special spectator in the stands, President John F. Kennedy. President Kennedy and Bud Wilkinson had become friends after Coach Wilkinson became the director of the president's physical fitness program. The fact that the President of the United States seemed to be pulling for the Oklahoma team was not lost on the Tide players. Yeah, and Coach Bryant, that kind of just said, well, he's over at Viston. He's over at Viston. And uh, this is before the game, see, but he said the President, he didn't come to our dressing room. He said, I don't know what to think about that, but if I was playing, I wouldn't know what to think. We, we found out before the game that he was there, and we found out where he was sitting, and he was sitting on the uh, Oklahoma side, and he'd made a appearance in the Oklahoma locker room. We, we were aware of that. Coach Bryant pointed that out. He also pointed out that he was probably going to be sitting on the wrong side of the field that day. Alabama wins the coin toss, and for one Bama player, it was a flip of the coin that he would never forget. He was such a nice man, uh, he flipped a coin and I, I called the uh, coin toss and won the coin toss and still have that silver dollar. I've had it framed and, uh, and uh, put on a plaque and uh, that's a keepsake I'll always remember. All the hoopla is over. It's kickoff when Crimson Classics returns. During the season, it was the Tide defense getting all the headlines. But in Miami against Oklahoma's stout defense, it was going to have to be the offense getting the scoop if the Tide was to win the 63 Orange Bowl. 
Oklahoma is kicking off to start the game, and Coach Wilkerson pulls a surprise right from the start. It's an onside kick, but rather than be caught off guard, Bama was ready. The six up front men knew that there was a good chance of having an onside kick, and you know, so when it happened, boom, there was no, no uh, shock factor to us. Everybody did their job and went and covered the ball, and you know, had us in great uh, field position. With good field position, it's Alabama's Cotton Clark for five yards. Eddie Vesparelli barrels over tackle for a gain of seven. It's Clark again, this time around in for five. On second and five from Oklahoma's 43, Joe Willie Namath goes to the air, but it's intercepted by Melvin Sandersfield for Oklahoma. Alabama's defense forces the Sooners to punt. And the tide comes out passing. Namath finds senior in Bill Battle for a gain of five. Close to midfield, it's senior Cotton Clark for a Bama first down. Joe Willie demonstrates that he can do more than just pass the football. He runs for a gain of six. On second and four, watch as number 12 runs the option. Nice pitch. Dothan native Gary Martin picks up the Bama first down. With less than nine minutes remaining in the first quarter, Namath finds one of his favorite targets, Richard Williamson. Watch this big one. Namath with a great fake, and he takes his time, looking downfield and finding Williamson. This time, the catch is good for a touchdown. Richard was a <clears throat> uh, truly a, a, a great competitor. Uh, uh, and I think that's the mark of most all the players that, that uh, played for Coach Bryant. That's the kind of player he would put on the field. Uh, his saying about that, when he put one out, they had been saucered and blown. And he would say that a lot on television. And, and I've always felt like a lot of people didn't know exactly what he was talking about. But in the old days, when people would pour their coffee in the saucer, the old folks, and they'd blow it to cool it, it was ready. Richard, would, when, when Coach Bryant put them out there, they were ready. The tide makes it look easy. 7 nothing, Bama. But wait, here comes the Sooners with 7.39 left on the first quarter clock. First and 10 for Oklahoma. Fullback Jim Grisham gets loose up the middle for a big gain of 22 yards and an Oklahoma first down. The Sooners show they can throw the football as well. It's Fletcher passing for the Sooners. He finds Bumgarner downfield for a big gain of 56. With the Sooners on the move, it's time for the Bama defense to step up and make a big play. And the tie does. A vicious hit by Eddie Vesparelli knocks the football loose from Oklahoma's Grisham. And Mike Hopper is Johnny on the spot. He recovers for the tie. Bryant weighing it safe inside his 10. The Tide is unable to pick up a first. Bama's Colwell is back to punt. Oklahoma's Lee grabs the ball at midfield, makes a couple of nice moves, and gets it down to the 38. Down by seven inside Bama's 40, with just a few minutes left in the first quarter. Can the Sooners take advantage? On first and 10, Monty Deer hands to Jim Grisham, but before he can start, the Bama D stops the big hoss for a two-yard loss. On second and 12, David Boyles up the middle for nine. Big play coming up. Sooners on the edge of field goal range and only needing a couple of yards for a first down. Bingo, Bama's D does it again. Not only do they stop the first down push, but they shove the Sooners out of field goal range. Sooners to punt with under a minute left in the first quarter. Alabama's ball, but the Tide puts it on the ground and gives it right back to the Sooners. But as the first quarter ends, Oklahoma returns the favor. When Grisham fumbles, it's a hot potato, folks, but Bama will start the second quarter with the football. Bama starts the second quarter with the ball on its own seven. Halfback Benny Nelson for a short game. 
On second down, Bryant employs some trickery as the ball goes to Cotton Clark on a direct snap, who then hands off to Wilson for a short gain. On third down and deep in their own territory, Coach Bryant goes old school. Clark quick kicks. It's a beauty. Oklahoma's Paul Lee chases the ball down at the Sooner 29 and makes a nice return to midfield. So it's first down for the Sooners at Bama's 49. Deere tosses to Lee on a sweep, but he's stopped by Leroy Jordan and Bill Battle for a two-yard loss. Deere hands off to the big fullback Grisham, but number 64 Jimmy Wilson wrestles him to the ground along with Leroy Jordan. It's now third down and a long eight for Oklahoma. The Sooners run a little razzle-dazzle. Deere pitches to Looney, who hands back to Deere, who now throws back to Looney, but it's broken up by the Alabama defense. So on fourth down, the Sooners punt it away. The ball goes out of the end zone. Bama ball on the 20. Namath tosses to Clark, who gives the ball to Wilson, picking up a tough five yards. With five yards to go for a first down, Namath once again finds Williamson for 15 and another Bama first. This time it's Vesparelli with a quick hitter up the middle and a gain of five. Namath on the option, fakes, keeps, picks up six and another tied first down. More shenanigans for the Tide as Namath tosses to Clark who tosses back to Namath. He looks downfield and once again finds Williamson. What a magnificent grab, flag on the play, Bad news for the Tide, the play is being brought back. Namath drops back. It's a little Utah pass to Wilson, but the Sooners were ready, gain of only three. Namath again back to pass. He's got Clark wide open. Oh, just off the fingertips at the Oklahoma 35. Cotton had nothing but green in front of him. Fourth down and Bama has to kick it away. Caldwell though with a nice punt as it comes to rest inside the 10 yard line. First and 10 at the Oklahoma nine. Deer hands to Grisham for a pickup of four. Deer tosses to Fletcher. It looks like a halfback pass. He's being chased by Bowler. Wiseman, Pell and company. Looks like he's getting away but the Bama D is there bringing him down for a loss of eight. Pell was a six foot, 206 pound senior out of Albertville. As with many of the Bama players in the 60s, Charlie Pell was not the biggest man on the football field, but no one told him that. Charlie Pell, Charlie was tough. He was in our rec recruiting class and he was tough from day one. I never forget first practice, Charlie came in and he was proud as he could be. He had, I think six stitches over his eye and he thought that was a was a battle badge he wanted to show off. Charlie Pell was uh, one of the great competitors uh, that I've ever known. He, he probably weighed 200 pounds, and, uh, but he was a tough, strong guy and, uh, and was a fierce competitor. And, and man, uh, you know, I think he was one of, the, one of the outstanding coaches in the business. Charlie Pell was just one of many former players of Coach Bryant that wound up with a career in coaching. Sadly, Albertville's favorite son succumbed to cancer at the very young age of 60. More from the 1963 Orange Bowl in a moment. Trailing by seven, backed up inside their own 20. What will Coach Wilkinson and the Sooners do? Backed up on their own five yard line, Oklahoma's Deer takes the snap from center and hands it off. The play goes towards left end, but watch the great open field tackle by number 17, Carlton Rankin. The senior from Piedmont causes the Sooners to lose two. The Oklahoma offense is backing up, forced to punt with Looney standing just inside the end zone. It's a good kick. Piper takes the ball on the Oklahoma side of the 50. He's got some room. He's to the 40, cuts inside, and makes his way down to the Sooners 34. First down for Bama at the Oklahoma 34. Namath fakes to his fullback Vesparelli and drops back to pass. 
Joe Willie finds Williamson, and the Fort Deposit native makes another amazing catch. Namath hands off to Vesparelli, who is met by Wayne Lee for a one-yard loss. Namath fakes to Vesparelli, then pitches to Carbon Hills Cotton Clark. It's Clark to the 10, to the 5, touchdown Alabama. What impressive blocking by the left side of the line. Alabama 13, Oklahoma nothing with 6.43 left in the second quarter. Number 40, Tim Davis kicks the extra point. It's now Alabama 14, Oklahoma zip, and that drive took only three plays. Cotton Clark was the go-to player for the Tide when they entered the red zone. He led Bama in scoring that year. He seemed to have a knack for finding the end zone. Well, uh, Terry Leon Cotton Clark from Carbon Hill, Alabama, uh, he was uh, uh, not only a heck of a player, but a character. Uh, uh, Terry Leon had a little high voice, and uh, he kind of squeaked a little bit when he talks, uh, but uh, he was a clutch runner. I mean, first downs and inside the 10-yard line, uh, Cotton, I probably could outrun Cotton on any day that we lined up. and. Uh, but God, he, he knew how to get in the end zone. Cotton, I think uh, uh, he was like the man on the goal line. We got the ball to him. He could get it in the end zone, and he always said it was simply because the cameras were lined up in the back of the end zone. He was, he was breaking to the flash, and uh, what a player, good one. With 6.38 left in the second quarter, the question is, can Oklahoma mount a drive before halftime? First and 10, Oklahoma, Grisham slips for a loss on the play. On third and long, Oklahoma strikes. Deer finds Grisham out of the backfield for a big first down. With the Sooners closing in on Bama territory, quarterback Deer hands off to Grisham. Great stop by McClendon for no gain. On second down, it's Grisham again at left tackle. A pickup of five, Charlie Pell on the stop. Third down, and Deer with the play fake. He drops back and goes deep, but number 28, Benny Nelson, is there to break it up. Fourth down, and the Sooners punt it away. It's a beauty, though. High end over end kick. It's going to be down on the one foot line. On first down, it's Namath for the quarterback keeper, gain of two. Backed up, Coach Bryant is playing it safe. Namath again on the keeper for about a yard. With time running down in the first half, Bryant elects to punt on third down. Elmore gets off a dandy. It drives Lee back to the 50. He fights his way to the 45, where he's brought down hard by Ferris Morton. Deer tosses to number 36, Paul Lee, who picks up five. Jordan and Williamson on the stop. Wilkinson shows some trickery as the Sooners try a halfback pass, but there is no fooling. Number 69, Charlie Pell, it's a loss of four. Great pressure by number 68, Ron Derby, who hits the ball up in the air as Wilson dives for it around the 45. Incomplete pass, fourth down. Oklahoma punts into the end zone for a touchback. Alabama ball at the 20. First and 10 for Bama, but with just under a minute to go, Bryant decides to play it safe. Second and eight, Namath at left guard for four, but wait, there's a flag. No play, as Bama's penalized five yards for delay of the game. Once again, it's Vesparelli, this time for seven yards over left guard as the second quarter comes to an end. It's all Alabama, 14 to nothing. While the fans were enjoying the Orange Bowl halftime show, Alabama cheerleader Martha Campbell was trying to get a glimpse of President Kennedy. And he looked down and he said, do you want to come up here? And I said, yes, yes. So he sent the Secret Service man down to get me and said, the president has invited you up to his box. My knees were weak. I was still crying. I could hardly walk up there. But anyway, I finally did get up there. And, and he stood and said, how do you do? And I just went, huh. <laughs> and, and he said, um, I'd like for you to meet. He was a little bit shocked. Remember, he, I, I didn't, I was just crying. And he said, this is Governor Bryant. And I said, <laughs> And then he said, and this is Peter Lawford. And I said, uh, 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 
And he looked at me and he said, uh, your team is doing very well. Now, we were. We were stomping Oklahoma. And I looked at him and I said, ah. and he still kept standing and staring at me. And he said, um, what is your name? And I looked at him and I said, ah. I could not remember my name. I was so excited. I was just wiping my eyes. And finally, I just stood there and cried and realized I better go back down. I, I couldn't even talk to him. I was taking all of his time. So I said, thank you, Mr. President, for letting me come up here. I really enjoyed meeting you. And I started crying, and the Secret Service men escorted me back down. Well, when I got down, I think every photographer at the Orange Bowl was over there. They were snapping pictures. They knew something was happening in the president's box, snapping pictures, interviewing me. There were microphones. And, and to find out who I was and what had happened, of course, some of them knew because they had snapped the photograph. But it was probably the most exciting day of my life. At that point, it certainly was. And it's still one of the most exciting days of my life. Alabama is in control, but with 30 minutes still to be played and the legendary coach Bud Wilkinson on the opposite sideline, who knows what can happen. Alabama's defense held the Sooners to only four first downs in the opening half. Can Coach Bryant's Tide continue to hold the Sooners in check? It's second half action on Crimson Classics. Alabama's kicking off to start the third quarter. The ball goes deep into the end zone. Joe Don Looney takes it for Oklahoma and decides to bring it out. And it pays off. A nice run brings it out to the Oklahoma 22. Deer fakes up the middle on first down and keeps himself picking up 15 yards and a Sooner first down. Now it's Grisham at left guard for a gain of six. And again it's Grisham over left guard for five yards and another Oklahoma first down. It's Grisham once more. This time he takes the ball down to the Alabama 47. The Oklahoma offense seems to be clicking, thanks in part to its strong running game, something that did not surprise the Alabama players. They were a big, strong football team, uh, had a terrific uh, a running game. The offense uh, was, was excellent. Uh, had a halfback uh, by the name of Joe Don Looney and a, and a fullback by the name of uh, uh, Jim Gresham. And uh, Jim had a terrific day against. We, the only thing that saved us is we shut down Joe Don pretty good. I think he only gained 25 yards or less. Well, they had they had two full they had a fullback and a running back, and both of them were about 240 pounds. And I'm talking about could play football. Uh, Joe Don Looney and boy, fullback was Grisham. Uh, they had a wide out that was a sprinter, and uh, I think he was the Big 12 hurdles champion. Monty Deer was a quarterback. He was all at, uh, all Big 12, and uh, they had a good football team. Once again, Oklahoma tries some trickery, but Grisham fumbles the football after being hit hard by Eddie Vesparelli. The Sooners recover at the 46. On second down, Deer fakes to Grisham, keeps himself, and picks up four. Great game tackling, though, by the Crimson Tide. Third down, the ball's at midfield. Deer drops back, but wait, it's a draw. Looney has it, but the Bama defense is not fooled, and the play loses two. A beautiful fourth down punt by the Sooners forces a fair catch by Cotton Clark at the Alabama 13. First down, Namath tosses to Clark, gain of three. Namath back to pass. Under pressure, he tucks it away and decides to run, taking it to the 21 before being tackled by future Dallas Cowboys standout Lance Rensel. Third and two now, Namath tosses it to Clark, who rambles out to the 26 for a Bama first down. It's Vesparelli at right guard. The play picks up a big seven yards. Namath keeps around right in for a short gain of one, tackle made by Larry Vermillion. On second down from the Tides 37, Namath, under heavy pressure, overshoots his target. Namath hands off to Vesparelli, and he works his way for eight yards. The blocking breaks down on this play, though, and Namath is sacked, bringing up a fourth down. Yet another great punt for Bama. The ball lands on the two, but bounces out of the end zone for a touchback. 
Sooner ball, first and 10 at their own 20. Deer hands off to Grisham for six yards. A short gain of two brings up a big third down. Deer fakes to Grisham, pitches to Looney, who has stopped at right end for a gain of one. The tackle by Charles Stevens and Leroy Jordan. With the third quarter halfway done, Oklahoma has its first poor punt of the day. On first down for Alabama, Namath runs to his left and picks up a few. On second down, Namath passes to battle. It's complete, but for only a gain of one. Namath back to pass. Everyone is covered, though. So again, Joe Willie shows his ability to hurt you with his legs as he races down to the 19-yard line. First down inside the Oklahoma 20, Namath hands off to Vesperelli, gain of three. Eddie Vesperelli was the team's leading rusher in 1962 with 373 yards. The Norfolk Virginia native could block too. Namath back to pass. Once again, he finds Williamson who's down at the eight, a gain of seven. Clark on a sweep. Good job by the Oklahoma D, but Cotton, always tough, muscles in for the first down anyway. First down, Namath back to pass. He has a man open in the end zone, but you don't see this often. Namath overthrows his man. Second down, Namath tosses to Cotton Clark, but he stopped at the two, bringing up a huge third down for the Crimson Tide. Third and goal, Namath calls his own number, but is stopped for no gain. On fourth down, Coach Bryant decides to bring in the kicking team. The snap is good, the hold is good, and Davis's kick is good. With 2-10 remaining in the quarter, Bama has built a commanding 17-0 lead over the champions from the Big 8. What a great drive by the Tide, especially when you realize that it was orchestrated by a sophomore quarterback. But everyone had acknowledged early on that this guy was something special. Joe Namath, great football player, great athlete also. He played basketball, baseball. Really, if Joe hadn't gotten his knee hurt, I think he'd probably been maybe the greatest quarterback of all time in the NFL, maybe in, uh, in college also. Uh, Joe and I were real good friends. Um, we, I really believe Joe probably would have won the Heisman Trophy if he had not hurt his knee in the North Carolina State game. I believe that's the game it was. If he hadn't hurt his knee in that game, I believe Joe would have won the Heisman Trophy. He was that great a quarterback. One thing you look for in a quarterback uh, is their ability to complete the pass, and, and you want a quarterback that is a competitor. Uh, Joe was both. He could make the play, and he competed when he was on that field. With a 17-0 lead, Bama kicks off. Looney takes it at his own nine, and after a nice return, is dropped by Nelson at the 42-yard line. First down at the Oklahoma 42. Deer hands off to Looney for a gain of three. Tackled by Jordan and Dan Curley. This time it's Grisham at right guard. Play gains three. Third and four. Number 45 Grisham on a toss sweep and the play fails to gain when he's met by a host of Bama defenders. Fourth down brings another Oklahoma punt. Billy Piper catches the ball on the 20 and rushes up to the 28 where he's brought down by George Stokes of the Oklahoma Sooners. But hold on, there's a flag on the play. The Tide accepts the penalty, and Oklahoma will punt again. The ball again goes to Piper, who catches it on the 22, breaks several tackles, and is brought down at the 29. The third quarter comes to an end, and the Tide heads to the fourth quarter with a 17-0 advantage. 15 minutes left. Can Leroy and company keep the goose egg on the scoreboard? The fourth quarter when Crimson Classics returns. Let's watch as future Dallas Cowboys star Leroy Jordan puts the finishing touches on a career day at the Orange Bowl. On first down from the 29, Namath hands off to Rankin. The play gains four. It's the Piedmont Alabama native again for a couple. A big third down as Namath fakes to Rankin, keeps himself and gets the ball out to the 42-yard line. First down, Alabama, and the clock has now become Oklahoma's biggest enemy. First down, Namath to Rankin on a quick trap play. It gains six. Butch Wilson off left tackle, gain of two. With the ball at midfield, Namath pitches to Clark, who sweeps left for a gain of four and another Alabama first down. More importantly, the clock continues to run. It's Namath with the old jump pass. 
but it's incomplete. On second down, Alabama tries the Utah pass, but Cotton Clark can't hang on, incomplete. On third and long, Namath looks for Williamson, but Oklahoma's Melvin Sandersfield tips the ball away. This brings up fourth down and another Bama punt. Elmore boots it out of the end zone, touchback. Oklahoma cannot move the ball, and with the clock running, is forced to punt it back to the tie. Bama applies pressure, but it's another boomer for the Sooners. The ball goes out of bounds at the tied 14. On first down from the 14, Namath gets the ball to Vesperelli, who picks up two. On second down, it's a toss to Nelson. The play gains three. Vesperelli at right guard, brought down at the 24. It looks like Alabama might have a first down, but the tide comes up just short. After Bama's punt, Oklahoma starts from its 35, with eight minutes remaining. Deer to pass. Bama's Charles Stevens is after him, but he connects with Grisham at the 50. Great job by the Sooners' Deer escaping the Alabama defense. First down at the Bama 45, Deer hands to Grisham. He tumbles his way down to the tied 40. Mike Hopper was again on the stop. With the clock running and Oklahoma down by 17, the Sooners stay on the ground. Grisham picks up four. Vesperelli, Jordan, and Wilson combine on the tackle. On third down, Jordan and Curley stop Grisham, but not before he picks up the first. Deer back to pass, but he's chased by Charles Stevens. He gets the pass away and hits Flynn for a 13-yard pickup. It's a first down for Oklahoma at the Bama 18. Deer to Grisham. But bingo, he's hit by Leroy Jordan and Bill Weissman for no gain. With the clock winding down, it's Grisham up the middle. But waiting on him is All-American Leroy Jordan. The Bama defense was already becoming legendary under Coach Bryant, having not allowed their opponents more than seven points in 24 consecutive games. And the leader of that defense was the pride of XL Alabama, Leroy Jordan. Leroy Jordan was a great one. He was a great competitor. Uh, he was in high school, he was at Alabama, he, he was with the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, and, you know, maybe not the great size, but he had the fighter's heart. And that's what all the great players, I think, have that. And uh, certainly Leroy was. Uh, uh, one of the great ones to come through Alabama. Uh, I think Coach Bryant's statement after the game, if they stayed in bounds, uh, Leroy got them. And uh, uh, he had a super game without question and uh, one of the great, great memories. Oklahoma fails to pick up the first down. It's Bama's ball. And all the Tide wants to do now is run the clock. Carlton Rankin picks up two. Namath rolls right. He's going to be sacked on a fine play by John Porterfield as he fights off a block to make the tackle. Third and long. With the clock running, it's Hudson Harris up the middle. After the Bama punt, Oklahoma at their 46. Deer fakes to Grisham. He keeps himself. He pitches the ball back to Lee, and Lee might go all the way. Only one man has a shot to catch him. And he does. Cotton Clark, showing speed and determination, runs Lee down at the Bama 18. With the clock under three minutes left in the game, the Sooners would like to take that zero off the scoreboard. On first down, it's Grisham plowing his way down to the tie 12. Second and four, Deer hands off to Grisham. He belts his way to the 11. Wiseman and Jordan on the stop. Deer fakes to Grisham, pitches to Looney. Hopper, Sharp, and Neighbors bring him down at the 10. Big play now, fourth and a long two. Deer to Grisham again. Pell shoots the gap, though, and holds him for no gain. Wilson and Jordan on the stop as well. It's Alabama's ball. That pretty much wraps it up. The tie takes over at the Bama 10. Number 16, Jack Herbert now at quarterback, and the junior from Houston, Texas, picks up maybe a yard. But Bama's going to run the clock out Time for one more play. The snap. Hurlbut downs the ball. Game over. Alabama has defeated the Sooners 17 to nothing to capture the 1963 Orange Bowl. Leroy was the defensive leader, while the finely tuned offensive machine was steered by sophomore sensation Joe Namath. 
Here is some rare kinescope footage of the Bama star being interviewed by ABC's Jim McKay. Well, we have found ourselves down here on the field. Joe Namath, the great sophomore quarterback of the University of Alabama. Congratulations, Joe, on a Thank great football much. game. Thank you. Was there a turning point in this football game that you saw? Well, those two fumbles Oklahoma had hurt him a lot. Yeah, they didn't that hurt you, any. No, uh, that helped us out. You sure gave a great, cool performance for a fellow in his first year of varsity football. Uh, were you at all jittery or nervous when you first started the ball game? Well, you always are in a big yeah. game. You got a team out there working with you like the rest of the guys from Alabama, a real good team. You don't have to worry too much about it. Who's going to win the Southeastern Conference next year, Joe? Well, I hope we do. <laughs> Alabama, huh? Yeah. Congratulations to you again. Ten wins, one loss and only 39 total points allowed all season. This team was helping to build a foundation for national championship runs the next four years. But that's for another time and another Crimson Classic. For the Paul W. Bryant Museum, I'm Gary Harris.